the ring too, so let's have a look at the betting. Mahogany, the 11 to 10 favourite, Desirable 7 to 1, Pebbles 15 to 2, Capricorn Bell 11 to 1, Seattle Siren 14s, Miss Beauty and Shoe Claire 16 to 1, Betsy Bear 20s, Glowing at Pride 25 to 1, and 33 is bar. Talking of nerves, Willie, uh, this filly Pebbles has been known to get very much on her toes. I see Philip Robinson has pulled his feet out of the irons. Yeah, she's a little, today I think she's been the best I've ever seen her. Usually you'll see her when they're sweating all the dark hairs on her and she goes very dark, but there she's still very chestnutty. Yes. So she's not sweating too much. Reasonably cool. There's Miss Silka Key, Cash as uh, Very much an outsider, but uh, very good luck to him on his first English classic ride. And as Miss Silka Key goes in, there are only two more to go. So, with the best of luck to them all in a really fascinating 1,000 guineas, over to you, Rory Gilbert. Thanks, John. Yes, Miss Silka Key and Cash Asmussen were the last to go in for this 1984 1,000 guineas. The flag up and away they go, and away to an incredibly level break. No one's going to suffer from a paltry start. And in the early of the race, it's Alain Leco who set Mycel Reem on. Mycel Reem in the lead from Pebbles, close behind these. Come glowing with pride, they've come a furlong already, and it's a terrific pace. After the three leaders, Capricorn Bell is well placed, then Miss Silka Key, but it's Mycel Reem making it. Glowing with pride is second, and Pebbles is third, and Capricorn Bell is fourth. Desirable comes next towards the rear of the field, and just about last is Seattle Sire, and also towards the rear is Rocket Alert. But they're all in a heap, all well grouped together with Mycel Reem, the Salisbury winner, continuing to make it. Mycel Reem and Alain Leco as they come on down towards the final five furlongs in the 1,000 guineas. Mycel Reem in the lead. Pebbles only just behind. Then Desirable making ground on the far side. Is Mahogany the favourite? Spot that white noseband. But with Mycel Reem still in command, it's back to the grandstand and Graham. And Joe Mercer on Mahogany going very easily indeed at this stage. Mycel Reem there though from glowing with pride and then next to the rails is Mahogany and here she goes. Pebbles coming with her. Walter Swinburne on shoot clear tracking Mahogany. Look at him go through on that gap that Joe Mercer made. Mycel Reem has the advantage they're at the bushes, two and a half to go. Mycel Reem from Mahogany. Joe now down in the dry position. Betsy Bay comes out of the pack. Pebbles throws down a challenge. Shoot clear is done with. Desirable comes with a run. But it's Mycel Reem in the lead. Mahogany getting squeezed out there by Pebbles, who's hanging across to the rails. They've got up just over a furlong to go. And it's Pebbles who stormed through. Pebbles from Mycel Reem. Mahogany back in third place. Desirable finishing well. Pebbles putting daylight between herself and her rivals there in this general accident of 1,000 guineas. It's Pebbles a long way clear from Mycel Reem. Desirable and shoot clear at the line. Pebbles is the winner, Mycel Reem second, Desirable third, shoot clear four, Betsy Bay five, then came Miss Beaulieu and Marathay or Mahogany in the mid-division, the backmarkers were Seattle Zara and Miss Silka Key, and last of all was Cambridge Lodge, and so the result of this general accident, 1,000 guineas, it's a win for number 15, Pebbles, owned by Captain Marcos Lemos, trained here at Newmarket by Clive Britton, and ridden by Philip Robinson. Red at the Warren Hill stud. Second was number 10, Mycel Reem, ridden by Alan Lecure. In fact, officially, it's a photograph for second place, with Desirable also in that photograph uh, for second place. Pebbles has turned out to win this general accident of 1,000 guineas to give Philip Robinson an impressive winning ride in this, his first classic victory. However, the disappointment, the big disappointment was Mahogany. She was certainly going well enough at halfway, but let's review these interesting closing stages with John and Willie. Well, they've gone no great gallop, and at this stage, I must say, I thought Joe Mercer was perfectly happy on Mahogany. He's still riding her on a beautiful long rein. Moved up into second place to Mycel Reem, on whom Alain Lecoeur has used entirely different tactics than he did in her other two runs. He held her up almost to excess on those occasions. He's made the running here, and made the running at no great gallop. Uh, let's watch as Pebbles comes through. It's just possible she may not have given uh, Joe Mercer all that much room but uh, I didn't, it hadn't occurred to me much at the time, but we'll just see. Uh, Mycel Reem possibly is hanging a little bit across towards Philip Robinson. As uh, Pebbles goes past Mahogany, well, the favourite hasn't got very much room, but Joe Mercer's never stopped riding. We'll see on the head-on in a moment. But now, Pebbles has taken command of Mycel Reem. You see Desirable coming from behind, uh, doing her level best to get on terms, going past Shoot Clear and Mahogany. Poor Mahogany, I'm afraid, has been a total disappointment. Uh, she didn't find anything when she came off the bit. Pebbles, on the other hand, has risen to the heights of uh, what Clive Britton always said. He's always said that this is one of the best fillies 
he's ever trained, it quite likely is the best. There's Desirable finishing really well to dispute second place with Mycel Ream, but absolutely no doubt about the winner. Pebbles from Mycel Ream, Desirable and Shoot Clear. Now then, let's have a look on the head-on, Willie. Uh, and we'll uh, look for the big <coughs> white face uh, nearest to rail, who can't see it yet, of Pebbles. It'll appear soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, the white-faced pebble, the, you can see the white face there, 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 there can't you? Just there inside the white cap. When you watch that Philip is trying to keep his horse straight because her head is actually on the side. You see how, he, how the head keeps going round to stop her hanging on top of Joe Mercer? Yes. But I don't think she does interfere with Joe, do you? No, but she is hanging that way, but she doesn't interfere. A very game performance. She's gone away and there's no excuses for any other horse. Um, possibly Mahogany, who has beaten Pebbles before, the pace wasn't fast enough, or possibly the faster ground. Yes, I suppose it. it uh, the the early pace. I mean, you you said to to begin with, the moment they set off, you said they were going no gallop. Yes, well, everybody was taking a pull, um, and of course uh, Pebbles likes the, the firm ground. Being by Sharp and Up, he loved the, the firm ground, and most of his progeny go on the, uh, the, the fast ground. Mm -hmm. And she's won very convincingly. 138.19. Uh, well, that's better than standard. Not uh, nowhere near the record, which is 135.8, but uh, a fast time, predictably. Um, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that Willie's wrong about them going no gallop. I'm sure they did no go no gallop to begin with, but they went a pretty good gallop from halfway. There she is, Captain Lemos, one of the great supporters of British racing. How lovely it is to see him and uh, Clive Britton. Uh, getting a reward for their wonderful support. Eight Pebbles. to one, she was. Pebbles, the eight to one winner. Second was number ten, Mycel Ream. Third was number four, Desirable. Fourth was number eighteen, Shoot Clear. That's the one, two, three. Four.